Cavendish's main aim in life was to weigh, measure and classify as many objects in the universe as he possibly could. And fortunately, like many scientists at the time, he was fabulously wealthy, so he was able to indulge his curiosity with hundreds of extraordinary experiments. Like this one, which he first reported in 1766. It involves taking a metal and take zinc, and then I'm going to pour concentrated hydrochloric acid onto the zinc. Now I'm going to bubble the gas that's produced into this soap solution. So these bubbles are now going to be filled with this gas. And very quickly and carefully, I'm going to light the gas. Now Cavendish called that not, um, not, un not inappropriately, I suppose, inflammable air. It's the gas that we now know as hydrogen. But Cavendish didn't stop there. He doggedly continued his quest to quantify hydrogen until he could describe every aspect of its existence. So he wanted to see how his newly discovered gas, hydrogen as we now call it, reacted with other things, including air. So I'm going to repeat Cavendish's experiment again, but this time with a vessel. What I'm going to do is fill it with hydrogen. So that's full of inflammable air, and I'm going to light the spark. Now, what you saw there was a chemical reaction, the reaction of hydrogen with air. And if you look closely on the sides of the flask, you'll see that it's, well, it's wet. That is water, and it's appeared as a result of the chemical reaction. In many respects, Cavendish embodies what science and what being a scientist is all about. His curiosity about the world drove him to design experiments in an effort to gain new insights into the way the world works. Now, Cavendish didn't really have any idea what happened in these chemical reactions. Indeed, this whole theoretical framework was nonsense to modernise. It was based on alchemy. He thought things burned because they contained a substance called phlogiston. But even though that is complete nonsense, because he was a great experimental scientist, his measurements were correct. So he managed to measure that water is made of two parts of hydrogen to one part of oxygen, H2O, even though he didn't believe that water was made of anything at all. So that ability to get your theoretical picture, your ideas about the way that nature works, completely wrong, and yet make honest and precise measurements that stand the test of time and are correct is the mark of a great experimental scientist. Thank you.